Hello and good morning. I have a few minutes. The sun is already starting to rise, but out again on another Saturday morning, going to go see what wildlife we can see. Um, one difference that I did note on the drive-in, it is getting closer to spring. I saw the river and not just what I usually see, which is driving by and you see the river on the side of the road and it's just covered in snow and it's you can't tell the difference if you don't know that that's where the river is, plus all the trees around it, but anyway. I actually saw flowing water, a good bit of it. I'm guessing somewhere back where they get a lot of sunlight, it has melted it down enough and the flowing water has made it to the point where the river can be seen again. I don't think that I'll see it here at this park, um, because I don't think it gets enough snow in that area. I don't know yet. I haven't gotten out of the car. I just got here. But there's that. And then I did want to test something today. I wanted to actually try to back up one of my theories that I've been thinking. I've been coming here a good bit, and I've noticed the birds, when I do see them, they're all the way up in the tops of the trees. That's probably because of the cold. That's my most... It's warmer up at the top of the trees is what I'm thinking. Heat rises, although... In elevation, the higher up you go, the colder it does get. It's <laughs> very cold up here as opposed to down off the mountain. But I think, on a smaller scale, it's because of that. I think the heat rises up, and that's why they stay on the top of the trees. Much more sunlight. They're not in the snow on the ground or anything like that. Sometimes I do see them come down, but it's not very often. And that that is a logical theory to me. That it's because of the heat. Now, I want to test this, so I brought this from my kitchen. It's just a cheap laser digital thermometer. It's got two modes. One is a laser, like I said, and the other one is just kind of an overall scan. And I'm gonna take temperature readings throughout the day while I'm out here and see what it is on the ground and see what it is like halfway up the tree and then at the top of the tree if I can. Hopefully, assuming this works, I don't actually know how cold, what kind of temperatures it will. Oh, it's right on here. Um, it can read between negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit up to 716 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 50 Celsius to 380 Celsius. I'll be doing Fahrenheit because that's what I'm used to as that's what we use in the U.S. Anyway, I want to see and test that theory. Uh, I don't know how well this will work. I have used it at home to be like, what is the actual temperature in here? I assume it's accurate enough. It's cheap, so it's probably not that accurate, but enough for my purposes. I've checked the temperature, make sure the heating vents are working, seeing how hot things get. Basic curiosity solving. How hot does this pan get when I put it on the stove? How hot is my oven? That's all I've ever used it for. I don't remember how long I've had it or why I bought it originally, but it's been fun. And when you turn on the laser, the cat likes to chase around it like a laser pointer. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pack everything pack everything. No, I'm going to unpack everything. I'm going to build up the camera. I'm going to get out, see what we can see today, and hopefully prove my theory. Or disprove it, which would be even more interesting, and then I'd have to try to figure out what kind of science that makes. Let's go see what we can see.
Okay, back in the car. My theory was wrong. Um, <laughs> it seemed to be taking a couple readings, uh, cold on the ground, and then about mid, well, just at the base of the trees, you know, my general height area got warmer, and then towards the top of the trees is cold again. So, totally out the window. Um, my second theory birds stay at the top of the trees because it's easier to spot each other up at the top of the trees and this time of year we are definitely getting to spring and they are looking for mates so maybe that's it back to the drawing board essentially on that one it is not the heat does rise a bit but my original theory which made me go that doesn't seem right earth warm above earth not as warm and it just gets colder the further away you go. So that definitely tracks even snow on the ground. Now, obviously, they're not going all the way to the ground. But speaking of birds, boy, did I see a lot today. We are definitely getting back to spring. And this place is just like the uh, man who comes here says, good spot to see some birds. Saw quite a few. Um, okay. It's kind of warm now, so I was keeping my door open. Um, it got, honestly, this is the first day uh, since the beginning of the snow season, which I think started in November, and it is now April 1st. There's just snow. It's just snow. Everything is snow. There hasn't been a single time that I haven't gone out to my car and had to clear it of snow first. You live with snow. You are snow. Everything is snow. This is the first time that I, I didn't need, I got out there and realized it started getting warm, I did not need both sets of gloves. I usually have kind of a liner glove, which is nice and thin, and then the thicker ones that go over top. Didn't need the thicker ones. Honestly, probably didn't need my heavy winter coat either, but I still had it. Um, and I definitely, well, the wind kicked up at one point, but yes, saw plenty of birds. Um, some I'm familiar with, like uh, the red-winged blackbird. I've definitely seen that one a number of times. Um, others, not 100% sure. There was a big hawk at one point, and I think the white under the wings on the underside. Mm, I don't know, it didn't really look like an osprey, so I'm not entirely sure on that one. And then I definitely saw a bald eagle. That was cool, had a lot of stuff like that. And then some smaller birds here and there, some chickadees. Um, things that I, I don't know 100%, but the editor will tell us if we've seen them before. Let's start out with what we heard first.
The first thing that Michael actually did was make a mistake. If you follow the personal vlog the previous weekend, Michael shot something completely different that was not wildlife related, which means that the camera was in manual mode and set to 60 for the shutter speed to match 60 frames per second, which is really slow and blurry and really, really bright when it comes to bird wildlife footage. I did what I could on the editing side to try to pull it back. It was very overexposed and not great, but here's the clip from that. This is a bird that we've seen before. Back in 2020, September, just after moving to Wyoming, uh, up on top of a mountain, Michael was doing still photography and saw the dark-eyed junco. What we have today is a completely different variation of it, which I just learned about looking in the bird book. This one in particular is called the Oregon, uh, after the state, I assume. It looks very different, as you can see, between the photo and the clip. This next one is also overexposed, unfortunately, but that would be the last one before Michael catches this and changes the settings in the camera as he should have from the start. The red-winged blackbird, a very familiar face and also a very familiar call, very distinct. One of the few that instantly upon hearing it, Michael can be like, oh, that's the red-winged blackbird. Just a few minutes after, and there's something large off in the distance. Now, it takes Michael a second to get the camera all focused and onto this new bird. This is what he was talking about when he was saying maybe an osprey because of the white underneath. Definitely not. Very obviously a red-tailed hawk. But to be fair, it wasn't exactly close. You can see from the GoPro shot, about 300 meters away, as measured by the rangefinder. And of course, after standing there recording for seven straight minutes, as soon as you go, oh, my hand hurts, and move away from the camera, that's when the bird takes off. So, didn't quite get it in frame as it was flying away, and then it immediately went behind the trees, still. And as Michael also mentioned, a bald eagle off in the distance, slowly circling, riding the thermals up. just barely see it on the GoPro.
and a very brief glimpse of a chickadee. These things are so quick. This is mostly the butt of another dark-eyed junco, but more of the kind that we have seen before, the gray-headed, as they're called. There was a little bit more, but I'll let Michael talk about it first. Uh, I finally, the wind started getting strong. It was about three, three and a half hours, I think, in total out there. Uh, the wind started getting strong, and it was like, all right, this is kind of cutting through. There's not as many birds. It's probably time to start wrapping up. And I'm heading back, and I'm walking. I, I walk across the bridge, and then on the other side of the bridge, there is a spot where the, the water kind of collects. It's a little stream, and there's birds there. And this is, like, right next to, and I'm there, and they're there, and they don't seem to mind, and they're just hanging out. And so I start getting some footage, and I got some really good, I don't, I don't know, I think it was a gray and brown. It's hard to tell colors through the camera as I'm recording because I use um, what I call peaking to tell when things are in focus, which puts a red outline around everything that's in focus, so most of the camera looks red. So it's real hard to be able to tell the colors right here and then, but that's why we go back and the editor can tell us whether or not we've seen that one before. I feel like I have seen that one since I've been coming out here, but I, not this close, not this clearly, and it was doing its call which I should have gotten the audio for, so super happy about that. This one's a bit hard to try to identify because it's covered so much by the foliage but we'll come back to it here in a minute. First, we get a little bit more of the Oregon variant of the Dark Hat Junko. To it. Definitely a kind of sparrow, but it's kind of hard to tell which one. There's so many types. I don't think it's just a common song sparrow. When it turns around, you'll see it's got a very dark spot on the chest that it doesn't really seem to be apparent there, but I do see it on the American tree sparrow, and the coloring kind of matches. The juvenile has more of the streaks running down the front, whereas fully grown, it has more of a solid color along the chest and belly. It's tough, but I'm leaning more towards American Tree Sparrow. Yeah, a great time out overall. Really happy about that. Good stuff. Hmm. <sighs> I think that's everything. Until next time, hopefully we'll be back out here seeing more birds soon. This makes me really hopeful. Spring is definitely starting. It's still fully winter, but that does mean that at some point we'll get more spring, and this place is going to be hopping. Flocking.
bird. <laughs>